Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our Small Business Entity Workshop, uh, Choosing the Right Legal Entity. The agenda for today is to uh, go over the main forms of legal entities that uh, you can use to structure your business from a legal perspective. The goals for today are uh, the importance of each legal structure. Um, and so as an entrepreneur, one of the most important you know, business issues that you'll face uh, when starting your business is what sort of entity you should choose. And each entity or form of business uh, will provide certain protections, certain risk, um, exposures, and certain kinds of flexibility in terms of how you can control your business, how you can raise capital, and how you manage your business. And so I want to hit on all those points. Uh, the main entities that we'll cover today are the sole proprietorship, uh, the partnership, the limited liability company, and the corporation. And there's different kinds of corporations, different kinds of uh, partnerships. Um, and then we'll also cover cooperatives very briefly, but won't go into a ton of detail. It's a little bit more involved process, um, but something that's good to know about as well. The main considerations in choosing a business entity um, is, you know, the first one is control. And so how much control do you wish to have? If you choose an LLC versus a corporation, you know, that will impact your ability to control your business as well as your business partners. Um, similarly, liability. If you're a sole proprietor, the liability protections in terms of legal liability, liability and tax liability um, are going to be different depending on if you choose a corporation or a sole proprietorship or an LLC. Um, and then tax considerations. Um, something you want to think about is how do you want to be taxed? Um, do you want to be taxed, you know, personally? So, you know, if you choose, uh, you know, a sole proprietorship form, then all the money that you make in that business, that's your own personal income, you'll be taxed on that. Um, but, you know, if you're a corporation and you don't elect to be, uh, you know, an S Corp, then any income generated by that business um, will be, uh, you know, taxed twice, so it would be taxed once at the, at the business level and then any you know, money that you're paid or any dividends that you receive from that will also be taxed. So that's another consideration in choosing your business entity and I'll go into details uh, with each business entity on that issue. Um, and then complexity. Certain business forms are more complex than others. Uh, for example, a corporation is probably the most complex or maybe a cooperative corporation would be the most complex business forms. Um, so that's something else you want to consider. It may not be necessary. A lot of people hear the word, oh, corporation, Inc., I want to have a corporation. That's really cool, but it might not be worth all the additional costs and complexity of uh, managing a corporation for your business, depending on where you are. And then, uh, you, know, you know, another issue related to that is the ease and cost of setting up and operating that business entity. Um, you know, again, the corporation is the, probably the most expensive in general to, uh, to set up and to operate. So that's another consideration. Sole proprietorship, pretty low cost. Um, you can pretty much just get started, but then there's drawbacks to that. LLC is, you know, kind of in the middle. A um, little bit more costly, more protection. So yeah, again, I'll talk about entity formation. This is another list of uh, some of the subcategories in each uh, sort of overall category of business entity. Um, again, sole proprietorship, partnership. You have general partners, you have limited partners, uh, limited partnerships, um, LOCs, there's different kinds of corporations, um, and then cooperatives. Another thing is to think about where you are now in your business plan. If you're at the concept stage, you know, you may not need an entity right now. Um, you know, if you already have operations, uh, then you want to think about what sort of form, what sort of legal entity you want to uh, hold your business in. Um, do you have agreements in place already that will impact, you know, uh, those contracts? Um, if you've already contracted to provide services individually, then it may not make sense for you to, you know, form an LLC at this time. You'll have to sign those contracts, those other things to think about. Are you currently filing, uh, you know, uh, documents with the state, reporting um, your business operations or related to licensing and things like that? Are you happy with your current entity? Um, if you're an LLC, you may want to, you know, change to a corporation to gain some flexibility in terms of how you raise capital. Um, so that's another consideration. And then again, you know, do you want to start a new business? Um, it's costly. Even just, uh, j even just having a legal entity can be costly because there's annual filings and fees you have to pay and certain taxes you have to pay. So that's another consideration. Um, a big consideration um, that you need to take into account is how you want to raise capital. Because you just depending on how you want to raise capital, that will significantly impact which form of entity you should use. Um, if you're going to have one business partner who's bringing in lots of capital, you may not need a corporation. If you're going to lots of different um, you know, institutional investors and different you know, individuals, then you might want the corporation. Um, how is ownership and profit going to be handled is an important business consideration in general. Um, that impacts the entities you choose. 
And then, of course, liability is the biggest sort of, you know, legal issue that you want to think about uh, with your entities. And then your succession plan or exit plan, um, you know, so where do you see your business going long term? Do you plan to maybe sell the business one day or uh, do you want to pass it on um, to someone in your family or another business partner? Um, you know, sole proprietorships, you know, they pretty much end once the business owner dies, whereas, you know, LOCs and other legal forms, um, you can pass those on to, to heirs. So the first, uh, the first business uh, entity that we'll talk about is a sole proprietorship. And so that is basically uh, a business that's owned and operated by one or more persons uh, for profit. Um, this, is, this doesn't have like a formal legal structure. Um, you know, it can pretty much be a handshake agreement. You don't have to have a written agreement, but we always advise, um, you know, clients to have a written agreement. It's pretty much always in your best interest to be aligned on what the terms of your uh, venture are. Um, but you don't necessarily have to do that. Um, sole proprietorship can allow you to split, uh, you know, things 50-50 fairly easily in that agreement. Or, you know, if you're the, you know, the sole owner of your business, then, you know, and you're the main one operating your business, then you can keep 100% of those profits. Um, and certainly it can be a sort of a, a business form that you can use while you're in transition period of building your business out. And maybe you don't have, you know, the extra money that you want to spend on forming an entity. Um, you know, so a sole proprietorship can be a, a beneficial form. Um, and then again, as I mentioned, personal income and taxation, um, you know, all the income generated through the sole proprietorship will be income to you personally, so you have to report that on your personal taxes, and so the accounting and all that will be important, um, as it is in general, but it's especially important here. Uh, again, some advantages of the sole proprietorship, which I previously already hit on. Um, this is the most simple and least expensive form of business entity and structure. Um, you have complete control over all the decisions regarding the business. Um, you know, if you have a business partner or something, then, you know, you consider that. But um, that's more of a partnership. Um, you receive all profits generated from the business personally. Um, you know, you can sort of, you know, dissolve the business at any time. You don't have to worry about other partners and things like that. Um, you report profits and loss, uh, again, on your, on your personal income tax returns. Um, the disadvantages, um, the law will not distinguish between you and your business. Um, and then again, you have unlimited liability, um, you know, with respect to the business operations and your personal assets are at risk. If the business goes bad and you own a house, you know, technically they could probably come after your house or anything else you own. Um, and then, you know, one other caveat is you will need to register the business name with the state um, and so, or with the county rather. So again, on formation, there's no formal process, no documentation other than, um, you know, your assumed or DBA, as they call it traditionally. Other than that, I mean, you also need to get your, uh, you know, your, any licenses that are necessary, depending on the line of business. Uh, there might be licenses required at the federal, state, or the local level, county level. Um, so that's another consideration, which just depends on which business um, you're in. And so the, nec the next form of business we're going to talk about is uh, partnership. And so there are generally two different kinds of partnerships. Uh, there's like a general partnership and then there's a limited partnership. Uh, general partnership is a partnership where you have two or more, you know, uh, you know, business partners coming together, contributing money, labor, skills, and other resources. Um, you know, they, sh they agree to share in the profits and losses of the business. Um, it can be a handshake agreement. This can be extremely formal or extremely complex. Uh, the partnership is used uh, in a variety of contexts from, you know, just a small mom and pop business um, to some of the largest, you know, private equity firms um, and investment firms, um, to law firms. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of different forms of uh, businesses that use the partnership model. Um, and again, in the general partnership, you know, any income generated is uh, personal income and is taxed that way. Um, so that flows through directly to you. It's not taxed at the business level. Um, then there's also the limited partnership, and with the limited partnership, you have general partners who traditionally are those that are uh, tasked with managing the business and uh, bringing capital um, sometimes, and then you have limited partners who are pretty much silent partners. They put in money um, or assets or they bring whatever else to the business, but they're not involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the business. Um, and so again, their power is limited. Here you need an agreement. You can have an agreement with a general partnership, and you should have an agreement there too, um, but with a limited partnership, you know, you have to have an agreement, um, and then, as I said, the general partners manage it, uh, limited uh, the limited partners have no control over the business, but they also have limited liability, 
And so they're not, you know, necessarily liable for the business's debts and legal liabilities um, above whatever they put in. So their money is at risk, but, you know, the personal assets and all that are not at risk. Um, again, the advantages of uh, the partnership. In general, it's pretty simple and inexpensive, but it can get pretty complex. Um, raising capital may be, pro uh, may be easier with the partnership um, because you can bring in unlimited partners who just you know, put in their money and then they go about their, their lives. Um, and then again, with partnerships, you, know, you can kind of um, you know, increase your capacity to provide services because you can bring on additional partners who have different skill sets um, that can help you grow your business. Um, I think we hit on all the rest of these. The profits must be shared, so that's the disadvantage of the partnership. Um, and then at, at the same time, uh, once the business uh, is dissolved, it will, the partnership will be dissolved upon the death of uh, a business partner or if a business partner decides to leave the partnership. And there can be a lot of rules in your agreement around that um, and how that is handled. And that's another reason why it's important to have an agreement in place for a partnership. And then again, you'll likely need to register the partnership with the county. On formation, there's no formal process required um, unless you're going into like limited liability partnerships and all that, as I mentioned. Um, again, you'll need all the necessary licenses and permits. Um, if you have a, a, you know, a DBA or an assumed name for your business, um, you'll need to file that. Um, and then again, recommend a partnership agreement. With the limited uh, partnerships, uh, you have to file a certificate of limited partnership. Um, there's different forms of, of filings that are necessary depending on the state that you're operating in. Um, but you know those names, you can find those online. Um, the forms are fairly straightforward, but we recommend that you consult an attorney. Um, and then again, the name, if you choose to use a limited partnership, then you know the limited partnership LP designation needs to be in the name. Um, and that's just a statutory requirement. And then, again, a written partnership agreement is required there. Um, the next uh, business entity, and this is probably the most popular one, the most widely used in a variety of contexts, is the limited liability company, or the LLC. Um, and so LLCs can have one or more members. It's basically like a partnership with, uh, you know, limited liability protections and certain uh, filing requirements. Um, it, typically, you would have an operating agreement, which is basically kind of like bylaws. Um, you probably heard about bylaws for corporations, which are um, documents that govern uh, the way that the corporation will be managed and operated. And then there's also another entity sort of under this category of limited liability company called the L3C, which is basically a hybrid entity, kind of like a uh, hybrid between the LLC and a nonprofit sort of LLC um, that folks use. So it's kind of like a lower profit LLC. If you, uh, you know, if your business um, sort of has like a social mission and you feel like you could uh, take advantage of that, you know, the benefits of marketing your business as, um, you know, a social enterprise or something like that, then the L3C is a good model to help you do that. Um, it's not that different from the LLC in terms of structure and all the rules around it. There's a, you know, a couple different things um, that would be different, but otherwise it's pretty similar to the LLC. Um, and again, you can still have a social enterprise with an LLC. Um, again, the LLC, it's a little bit more challenging to raise capital um, through an LLC than it is an Inc. Um, basically, so when you form an LLC, all the membership interests have to be, you know, issued. And so it can't be like, you know, you're holding LLC interest in reserve or anything like that or in treasury like you can with a corporation. And so it will be 100% owned. So anytime that you issue new equity, bring on another you know, partner through ownership, then you know, you'll be you know, diluting your ownership or the other partner's ownership, um, depending on how you structure that. And then on formation of LOC, um, again, you just file articles of organization with the Secretary of State. Um, and then there's certain uh, sort of organizational you know, consents and things you need to sign. Um, appointing a manager or, you know, or if it's going to be member managed, you know, making clear that the entity will be member managed, um, some filing fees, it's uh, 175 to file your articles of organization uh, with the state. Um, and then again, you should pre prepare an operating agreement, even if you're a single member LLC, um, oftentimes they'll open up a bank account, you know, at certain banks that require you to have an operating agreement. And so even though you're a single member LLC, you can pretty much do whatever you want with the business. You're not really you know, responsible to anybody but the state. Um, you know, oftentimes, they'll still require some sort of operating agreement. And so you, know, you can get those drafted you know, 
fairly easily if it's a single member LLC, you know, it can be two, three pages. Um, but if you have business partners and these LLC agreements get a lot longer and then you have to file any necessary reports with the Secretary of State. Um, next is uh, the corporation. Um, and so there's, you know, typical corporation you've heard of, um, there's C Corp and there's S Corp. Um, and then there's also a benefit corporation and there's a nonprofit corporation. Um, I'll mainly just cover the sort of standard uh, corporate form, C and S Corp. Um, so the corporation is like a separate legal entity from, you know, the business owners and operators. Um, every corporation has shareholders, it has a board of directors, all these are required. Um, they have officers, um, there's limited liability again, similar to the limited liability company so that the uh, business liabilities, legal and tax and everything else of the business are, um, you know, are isolated and um, only the business incurs those, not individual operators, um, unless there's like instances of fraud and all that and there's a lot of case law around that. Um, so it doesn't mean you can just do anything and you not know, be personally liable, but in general. Um, and then again, the corporation has bylaws. Um, again, the advantages of the corporation, uh, limited liability for the shareholders. Um, again, the directors and officers and all of them are still liable for their actions. Um, there's a lot of case law around that. Um, they still have like a duty of loyalty to the corporation um, um, and a duty of due care. So they still have to make decisions, um, you know, with, uh, with, you know, with, certain amount of information and they have to be reasonable to a certain degree um, and then again you can deduct the cost of benefits that you provide to officers and employees um, the disadvantages um, this is the most expensive and time-consuming um, form of business entity um, for smaller businesses a lot of times it's not necessarily the right choice but it can be and uh, a lot of times that decision is made based on sort of where you see your business going long term and then consulting with a with an accountant um, and they can advise you on the, the tax benefits. So again, with the uh, corporation, you'll file articles of incorporation uh, with the Secretary of State. Um, you can you can file that and then wait about a couple of weeks to have it formed, or if you need it, you know, quickly. There's expedited service, uh, which you pay an extra fee. I think it's around two hundred or so dollars. Um, it's the same thing for the LLC. It's an extra two hundred dollars uh, for expedited service, and then you can have your entity formed within twenty four hours, um, as long as everything's filled out properly. Um, again, you have to prepare and adopt bylaws. You don't have to submit the bylaws to the state, same way you don't have to submit the operating agreement to the state or anything. Um, and then you'll need your corporate minute book, um, your seal, stock certificates. Um, the next entity we're going to talk about briefly is the cooperative. Sort of the typical cooperative you've probably heard of is like a worker cooperative where the people that are doing the work at the, at the company are also the owners and managers of the company or they share ownership and management. And so, um, this is a increasingly more popular business model and in Illinois um, you can have a limited cooperative association and then there's also a cooperative uh, corporation. Um, there's different kinds of co-ops, agricultural co-ops, um, a wide range of cooperative. I mean, you can have a cooperative for almost any kind of business um, including uh, real estate uh, cooperatives. Um, with a limited cooperative association uh, you'll have three or more members unless the sole member is also a cooperative. Um, and then there's certain rules around voting. Um, instead of having you know, necessarily members or shareholders voting, you, know, you have like an assembly, which is essentially all the members of the cooperative who have the right to vote. Um, and then traditionally you use one member, one vote, um, as opposed to it being purely based on ownership. Um, and then, or it can also be by you know, what they would call patronage or um, usage of the cooperative services. Um, you also have directors. Um, you should have three or more unless you're a collective a worker cooperative, which would be a cooperative you know, managed by the workers, uh, owned and managed by the workers. Again, there's limited liability with this limited cooperative association. Um, so you get the similar protections that you would get with a corporation or an LLC. Um, and then again, you need to have bylaws. Those are required by the statute. Um, and an added benefit, um, or the limited cooperative association or cooperatives in general that they really qualify under state law is they're exempt from uh, Illinois securities regulations which securities regulations um, there's state securities regulations and it'll be like federal securities regulations you've heard about like the Securities and Exchange Commission or the SEC and so they basically regulate um, 
you know, the issuance and the sale and transactions and ownership in companies. And that's what you call securities. It's basically like um, an ownership interest in a company or a business or, you know, an asset or something like that. Um, there's also the cooperative corporation. And so that means having five directors who are shareholders. Um, you know, you have certain officers, um, you know, president, VP, secretary, treasurer. Um, and then you also have to have a manager who is not a director. Um, they want a certain degree of, you know, independence there. Um, and then um, stock has to at least be $5, like, you know, sort of basic stock has to be worth at least $5. These are just kind of just different rules. Um, and, you know, it can't be any more than $1,000 a share. Um, you can't have more than 10 shares per shareholder with the cooperative corporation. Um, there's a 10K investment cap. Um, and I'll get into some of the disadvantages of these. There's a lot of rules around having a, cooper uh, a cooperative. So yeah, some advantages and disadvantages of the cooperative. Um, you know, the advantages are, you know, sort of this social mission, shared wealth and decision making um, is shared among the employees. Um, there's democratic control over um, the capital and the use of capital and decision making in the company. Um, you know, sort of centers workers and empowers them or consumers, depending on it's a consumer co-op. Um, there's profit sharing. Uh, which is an added benefit. And then marketing, a lot of people, you know, want to shop at cooperatives. They see that as a way of, you know, doing business and then giving back or patronizing businesses and supporting their community. Um, and then the Illinois Securities exemption is a pretty, pretty big uh, advantage. Uh, the disadvantages, um, it's expensive and time consuming and there's not a lot of case law around using cooperatives. There's not a ton of examples. Not a lot of people who are experts that have also like developed cooperatives and then developed highly successful businesses. I think that'll change over time. Um, but, um, you know, just not a lot of history around those. Um, there's less flexibility, way less flexibility in raising capital, um, a lot harder. You'd have a harder time selling it to investors. But again, if your investors are, you know, the patrons of the cooperative or the other workers and, you know, people in your community and all that, then, I mean, I think it could be less of a concern. And then, of course, there's just a whole host of additional regulatory and organizational challenges with cooperatives. And again, there's special tax considerations, which I'm not an expert on, but I know they're there and they need to be navigated. To form a cooperative um, with the Limited Cooperative Association, you'll file articles of organization with the Secretary of State once they become available. Um, you know, the, um, with a cooperative corporation, um, you know, you would form a, a corporation and then elect to be a co-op and comply with all the terms of the Co-op Act. Um, and then, of course, you have to pay any licensing fees, I mean, any filing fees and license fees for your particular line of business, um, prepare and adopt bylaws and operating agreements. There's certain tax and accounting issues around how you handle employees um, that can be pretty complex. Um, you need to navigate. And then if you're a corporation, again, you know, you'll need a minute book, um, you know, stock certificates or choose not to have stock certificates, um, whatever other supplies you need. And then the organizational formalities, um, certain resolutions to appoint, you know, directors and, man and managers and officers and all that. And then again, just want to really emphasize that, you know, it's not like one business structure is better than any others. It's not that LLC is the best um, or the corporation is the best. It just really depends on your individual business and you know where you are in terms of the, in terms of your own business development. Um, you know, your initial choice of business structure doesn't lock you in forever. You don't have to stay there. Um, there's a lot of different ways to sort of change your business entity. I mean, you can sort of, you know, you can, you know, reincorporate or, you know, you know, transition to a different form or, you know, you could do a merger or something with another entity that you create. There's a lot of different ways to, to change your business entity. Um, so don't feel like you're locked in. Um, and then I want to touch on some legal resources that um, the city and other organizations, including my own, make available. Um, these are really valuable. Um, the City of Chicago has a small business resources center, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, these are the times um, that they're open and available. Um, and then every Wednesday, uh, we, uh, through my organization, we uh, recruit pro bono uh, attorneys at some of the biggest firms in the city. Um, and so you can get legal services there um, and they can put you in touch with additional services. Um, they do just basic consulting. So, you know, you couldn't come there and get like your operating agreement form or anything like that, but um, they can sort of talk you through basic business decisions. Um, again, it's not litigation, it's just transactional, but that's a great resource, uh, especially somewhere to start if you have legal concerns um, about your business. 
Um, Illinois State Bar Association has um, some guides online. Um, and then my organization, Chicago Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights, uh, we have a small business um, program and uh, practice where we connect uh, entrepreneurs with you know, transactional legal services. Um, either directly or through our pro bono partners where you know you can work with uh, some of the best attorneys and in, in the city um, and they can sort of help you navigate any legal issues that you uh, face for certain qualifications you gotta have a business plan and um, some other qualifications income qualifications and a variety of other um, you know sort of requirements but that's another resource um, Carpels is a great resource it's a pro bono legal uh, aid hotline so you can call them and find resources. Um, Justice Entrepreneur Project, these are private attorneys. They, uh, they do charge, but you know, it's a reduced fee. Um, there's some really good attorneys there and great resources there. Illinois Legal Aid Online is another one. Um, and then uh, UIC John Marshall Law School has a Community Enterprise and Solidarity Economy Clinic. Uh, it's basically a business clinic um, for you know, community enterprises and small businesses. Um, so that's another resource and they work with a lot of people too. Um, again, here, this is my email. Um, if you need to be connected with uh, legal assistance, um, you know, we're, we have a lot of different attorney uh, law firm partners that we work with. Um, so those are always a resource we make available.